Okay, everybody, welcome to Wolf County Wolves Esports Action here at Wolf County High School. Today's action is between our Wolves White team and Kenry Clay High School. So let's take a look here at our champion selection. And by the way, I'm joined here by Wolves Blue member Cameron Kasky. Hey, so it looks like they have banned Jax, which is one of Blake's champions besides our goth that he plays, and then banned Misfortune, which is definitely our ADC's Blake, Blake Halsey. That's definitely his best champion, so they went ahead and took that out of the champ pool. And our team, Vandarius and Vegar, both strong stacking champions. They're pretty much late game, so they're able to take that away from them. And let's see who their, who Henry Kelly's team decides to ban next. Blitzcrank. Blitzcrank. That's definitely mm -hmm. Dylan Prophet's main, besides maybe Thresh. So it seems like both teams have done some scouting this week, and... Preparation for this matchup. Wolf kind of decides to ban Katarina, which is a strong mid laner, along with Vagar. So we'll see who their mid lane decides to pull out. And their top laner is now picking, if they lined up correctly. And it looks like they're going to lock in Alawi, which they do. That's definitely a tough matchup for top lane. So for Blake, that'll be tough to get through. It's a late game and just all around annoying. She has killer team fights, so you can't, there's not much that you can do against her besides just wait out her ulti and bait it out. So I wouldn't be surprised if Blake picked an Urgot, and that looks like what he's going to do. Yeah. He picked Urgot. So let's see who Matt's going to pick. We may see a Warwick coming from Matt, but that would give him a lot of AD with the Urgot and Warwick. So Matt does have a very diverse champion pool, so he can pick out pretty much whoever he wants from the jungle. Oh, it's going to be Zin Zhao, all right, an early, an early game, game ganker. He does tend to do a lot of early game, game damage. He, he can control the map very well, and his ultimate is just good for getting picked off on people and making sure they can blow them out. All around good team comps, good, uh, good team comps so far for Wolf's Bite. And now we're going to see who their jungler is going to lock in. And it's going to be Braum for the support lane. Interesting. They decide to opt to go in for their support instead of any or mid laner first pick. Probably means that they're only comfortable with that support. And then we have a Sivir for the ADC, so they do lock in the bot lane. Now all that's left is for their mid laner and AD or and jungle to lock in, so solid team comp by them so far. And Logan is hovering the Galio. Definitely one of his stronger champions, I'm not surprised to see that at all. Has very good map pressure along with Urgot and Zin Zhao, so looks like they're going for the all round map play and Take out the Jarvan. Their jungler has not locked in yet, so that's a very good ban. And now we're just waiting to see who their top laner is going to ban. Looks like they banned Kaiza, which is one of Blake's champions they've been playing recently, so really tough for Blake. They have two of his champions gone, but he does have a couple others he can play, so no worries for them. And now we're going to see who Wolf County's final ban will be. Looks like they banned Echo, another strong mid laner. So they picked, they, they opt to ban three of their mid laners. Maybe their mid laner doesn't have a very diverse champion pool and they're just deciding to take him out of the... I think their uh, mid laner is uh, the Platinum. Okay, yeah, makes sense. So. Blake looks like he's going to pick in Ash, so they have a lot of global map pressure coming in with Galio and Ash. Very easy to set up uh, team fights. Very good picks for them. Now they don't have any magic damage yet, besides Galio. And he normally builds a more tanky route, so let's see if Dylan Prophet's going to come in with a AP support or what they're going to opt to do. Looks like they're going to lock in nobody. Brand. They lock in Brand, probably for their mid lane. Definitely a lot of magic damage for him that covers their magic damage very well. Brand is good enough that he can carry alone with his magic damage. So, but it's a very tough Galio against a matchup. It's, or a, it's a very tough matchup against Galio, especially just because he can negate a lot of that damage with one of his abilities. And Dylan locks in Leona. I have not seen him go Leona 
so far this season. He may have won it earlier in the season, but... You know, this is a really exciting matchup. The Wolves wide have improved so much this season, and uh, they've got their confidence built up, so uh, hopefully they can capitalize on their 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 new teammates this season and uh, really do a good job this match. Well, yeah, for sure. It seems like the white team has a very good lineup. They don't have much left magic damage upon the Galio, but I don't think it'll be that much of a problem if Galio gets a couple of AP on him. And Brand is going to be tough uh, to fight, especially later game. But they don't have any teleports, so they don't really have any global map pressure whatsoever. They do have a Sivir, which will be able to get them into fights, but they're not going to be able to teleport in, you know, across the map from top lane or wherever it may be. All right. Well, let's uh, let's take a few moments here while we're in the uh, three-minute spectator delay. Let's go over our starting lineup for the Wolves. White, we've got Blake Blackburn, senior up top. Uh, junior Blake Halsey running ADC, uh, junior Logan Creech running mid lane, junior Dylan Prophet running support role, and junior Matt Riley in the jungle. We also want to take this time to thank our sponsors, Appalachian Wireless, Mountain Telephone, Licken Valley Rural Electric, Farmers and Traders Bank of Campton, Whitaker Bank of Campton, and Sweet Art by Stephanie of Campton, Kentucky. So thanks to all our sponsors out there. Let's see. So we've got just a couple minutes here delay that we've got to sit out until the loading screen and the match gets started. So uh, any other thoughts, Cameron, on the on the matchup here? You know, I think it's going to be really interesting to see this bot lane go head to head because our bot lane has a heavy engage with the Ash Ultimate and the Leonis like CC, and they're just going to be able to lock down I think Sivir for a long time as long as they can bait out that spell shield and their jungler. You know, obviously, he has Rexha, so he's going to have a lot of early game presence, but he's going to fall off a little bit late game as Wolves and Zhao. And we we both just have a very late game comp except for our junglers. So, it'll be really interesting. Do you have any predictions for the game? Uh, well, let's hope the Wolves-White can uh, come out victorious. That's, uh, you know, the ultimate goal here is to get a W, so. Sure. This is this is going to be a real challenge Uh for, for Wolves White. They, they've they done really well this season, but this is the first team that has uh, everybody ranked on the, the enemy team, so it's it's good to see a good competition, that's for sure. Very interesting to me to see Braum with the exhaust. I guess he's trying to make up for the two exhausts in his solo lanes. Normally, supports nowadays will be taking Ignite, but with Braum, you know, you don't have that much engage. You're kind of more of a disengage-oriented champion. So exhaust does make sense, but the meta right now is just certainly in favor of ignite, and white team does have that advantage, and they also have the teleport advantage, like I mentioned earlier, and we have the essentially cross map ultimate from Galio, and we do have the global ultimate from Ash. It's gonna be very good pressure put on the map if they're able to capitalize on it. You know, Henry Clay really doesn't have much. Uh, engage besides that Sivir ultimate, and that, that just makes him quick. We have tons of CC on our team. We have the Urgai E and Galio's a lot, and Ash and Leona also have a lot. So it's going to be really interesting to see what they're going to be able to do with that engage, or if they're going to be able to get any picks really at all. We have a couple more seconds before we start loading into the game, and then it'll be you know a minute to load in. And whenever that loads in, we'll be on with the map, and we'll see what the we'll see what each team's going to start. And it looks like we are currently loading in. Let's switch the overlay over. Certainly going to be interesting to see what happens on this matchup. Very, very tough, as our top laner just mentioned to me, like I've previously mentioned. It's going to be very interesting to see what goes on. It'll be a hard matchup for white team for sure, but I think they'll be able to pull it out. We just have to use that teamwork to their advantage that they developed over the past two seasons and continue on. We're loading in now. We'll go ahead and take a look at the runes that each team now has. Now, Alawi has Conqueror, which is certainly fairly good for her, and Rexile also has Conqueror. 
brand running Comet, which is interesting because in mid lane you normally see something along the lines of Dark Harvest, but I'm sure it will work out for him. And Sivir has Fleet Footwork, which is very good rune on Sivir. Braum has uh, Guardian, which will be very good for defending on these heavy engages that my team has going for him. Argot has Unsealed Spellbook, which will allow him to take the utmost advantage of his rune cooldowns and switch him out whenever his teleport or flash is down for something that will allow him to gain advantage during team fights that Henry Clay otherwise will not have. Zijiao with Hello Blades, definitely very strong on Zijiao right now. Galio with Aftershock, which will make him extremely tanky for these team fights and let him engage to his fullest potential. Ash with Lethal, lethal Tempo, very standard Ash room, rune. Certainly be able to do a lot of damage in these team fights. And Leona with Aftershock, which is a very standard Leona rune as well. Now we see that Sivir has Heal, Brand, and Alawi have Ignite. So, as I've mentioned time and time again, they do not have any teleport. And, quite frankly, not really any global pressure besides the Rek'Sai and Sivir Ultimate. And it's going to be very tough for them to get a lot of pressure onto the map. They're not going to be able to do really much at all with these engages. Now, white team, very focused on engaging. They have an all-in team comp. Just around the board, Leona with tons of engage, Ash with their global ultimate, Galio with his ultimate that allows him to keep his allies up, and Xin Zhao with, you know, just a lot of engage in CC. Ergot also has very good engage and is very tanky and can stay in those front lines for an extended period of time. Well, if you're just now joining us, make sure you hit that subscribe button, like, and uh, keep up with our Wolf County Wolves esports all season long. sure that we're going to see a very standard starting lineup for these teams with Xin Zhao at red, red buff as long as Red Rex size at his red buff, and potentially their mid laners, both their mid laners with the opposing pixel brush, so it'll be able to get a lot of control on the map early game. We're now in, so let's see what they start. See the Oh, sorry. White team jungler does seem to be making it towards Pixel Brush, which to get some control on the map and also get a ward down to see if they're going to do any crazy invades. And it does look like a Lowey spotted him out there, so they may try to merge on him, but it doesn't seem like they're actually walking towards him at all. And white team's bot lane is just hovering around their blue buff with a ward on it to make sure that there there isn't any crazy invades. No, Lowey isn't doing anything. She's not trying to fight at level 1, as she shouldn't. And interestingly enough, she took Doran's Blade instead of Crouching Pot or Doran's Shield, especially against the Urgot. Looks like everyone has a very standard start on both sides. Matt does seem to be getting caught out right now. Try to check that bush for vision and seems to take a lot of damage off of that. Which doesn't shouldn't be too much of a problem with him because he can heal off the buffs very well. As Zen Zhao. And Rek'Sa started red as well as Zen Zhao starting red, so we'll see how it goes from here. We'll see if there's gonna be any ganks on either side very early. Rek'Sa did get a very big uh leash. And Matt's still on his red buff, just haven't taken it down. Looks like the red side or the the Rex side does have a little bit of a health event, but it shouldn't be too much of an issue. Brand learns hitting some poke on the Galio, but also shouldn't be too much of an issue as Galio has a lot of defense, defensive stats, and just is able to do anything essentially early game without having to worry about it. Both teams are going to play it really smart and and uh, stay back and not be overly aggressive and take too many risks. It seems like. We've got these. Bot side is shoved up, and it does look like Rek'Sai will be able to get a gank after he clears the scuttlebug if he does choose it to do so. But instead it looks like he's opting to pass towards mid, mid lane. He opts not to gank, which might be smart for him, as he does not know where Zen Zhao is. Both have their scuttlebug down right about now. And Alawi has shoved in a lot on the bot side, 
white side. Rek'Sai is taking a lot of damage from those jungle camps, and Zhao is staying much healthier than him. The slot CS disparity on top top lane. Matt is coming in for a gank, but I'm not sure if he's going to be able to get it off. He is getting it We're off. We're going to get the first kill of the match, flash. getting close here. And they Again, got the first blood goes to Wolves White. Team. Tough to gank and allow it, especially early. Well, it's going to get even tougher as the game goes on, but that was an impressive game by Matt. Did end up flashing for it, but he got Alawi's flash and Ignite out of that in death, so... Alawi doesn't have teleport, so she's going to miss all of that experience topside. It's definitely a large setback for their top laner. Good job for Matt and Blake on getting that off. Getting the kill. Now it looks like they know that there's a ward in mid lane brush, which seems to have just despawned. White team bot side is being very pushed up, leaving them susceptible to a gank, but they're actually getting a lot of damage off on the Braum. Able to do a lot to him, but... Seem to be CSing just fine and getting those minions. Kali was able to land a little bit of poke on the Rand while staying healthy in mana. Zinjiao is now bot side, so if Rek'Sai does choose to gank after he recalls, he'll be able to counter it. Allowing landing a little bit of poke on Blake in top lane. He's able to get actually quite a bit on this because Blake is choosing to stay inside the range and take the damage. Like has a Kindle Gem opposed to a Lowey's Longsword, which gives him a lot of health bonus, but Lowey has a little bit of extra damage. And Brain is choosing to play very aggressive on the Galio and doesn't get punished for it. it leaves Galio half health. Not much to do. So after five minutes in the match, looks like the uh, gold lead is neck and neck right now, and the kill count is Wolves White has up one nothing. Botlane does choose to go in here, and they're getting a lot of damage on the Blake. They might get the kill. Yep. They do. Blake burned both of his summoners. Still is able to get out with just the flash. That's unfortunate. Rek'Sai did gank. Rek'Sai gank. He did burn flash, though, so... Gary will barely escape in there in the middle. Grand doing a lot of damage early game with this Galio. Wouldn't be surprised to see Galio pick up something like an Abyssal Mask. Or some early magic resist. He instead gets the boots. Blake in the top lane does still have his TP, so if he needs to teleport bot lane for whatever reason, he can do so. So Henry Clay's uh, starting to pull away with a 800 gold lead right now. Wolf's Weiss going to have to pick up the pace here if they want to. Blake is taking a lot of damage there. Has to flash out from the Gal from the Alawi. He may still die. He has that shield up, so it seems like he's going to be able to get, get out safe. Matt is there. He chooses to go in. He has, and Matt comes he has in with the Alawi almost death. But dead. Kill. He's able to get the kill, but Zin Zhao is taking down a lot of health. But they do get that kill and bring the gold lead back to only 600 on, for the Henry Clay. Dylan Prophet is taking quite a bit of damage. He chooses to go in on oh, lane. Dylan able to get a lot of damage off on him. Galio does ultimate, but it's a little bit late, and Rek'Sai is there, so if Rek'Sai goes in, Galio flash, got the bomb, bomb flash, is able to do a lot of damage to that Sivir, but she only healed, so probably not very worth. They also let that mid lane exposed. They need to get back. Brand is certainly pushing in, but he has not been able to get a tower barrier yet, so it's not going to be too big of an issue. It's just that Galio lost quite a bit of an experience from that roam. And his ultimate. He does meet Brand. Chooses to go in. Rek'Sai is near, so if Rek'Sai comes back, they might be able to kill Brand. Or not Brand, but Galio. Galio does take quite a bit of damage from that Brand. He's able to stay alive, however, and keep keep up with the Brand and levels. Botlane is pushing into this tower. I would be surprised if it did not recall after this push. Seems like they're staying. Botlane come gets back. Looks like they're backing off now, potentially to recall or stay for the next wave. Potentially Blake has like just enough gold to get 
his bottom, or maybe he's waiting for enough to get it. Top lane, Blake is getting pushed in over and over. Wouldn't be surprised if Matt did not gank here soon at top. Looks like Brand is going in on Galio. Rek'Sai is also there. That's a dead Galio. Rek'Sai got the assist. Brand got the kill. Shouldn't be too big of a deal for Logan just because he's such a late game champion. He got a revolver first, so he did not get any magic resist or health, which otherwise probably would have let him live. Brand does have the one kill advantage and they're they're up now to a one thousand gold advantage over the white team, which is very unfortunate. Blake in the top lane is keeping up with CS just fine with the Alawi and is holding his own. Alawi has died twice. Blake has yet to use his teleport. Rek'Sai does give the blue buff over to Brand, so he will not have to back for quite a while and he's able to sit in lane for as long as he wants. Potentially poke down Galio more and Logan is one level under, but he can certainly make a roam to bot lane if he chooses to. And seems like Matt knew that they were recalling there, but they, he wasn't able to catch him out in time. And you played does seem to know that Matt is up to something, but they don't know what. He might go in for a mid lane gank here. Blake has taken a top lane trade. He's going. He's getting the advantage. Allow the ultimate comes down. That's a lot of damage on Blake, but he should be able to live here. Close, but he did end up dying. Rek'Sai ganked white team, and Logan ended up dying off of that gank. Kill is now 4-2 to two for Henry Clay. They have over almost a 3,000 gold advantage, 2,500 gold advantage. Well, Swat's really going to be careful here and make sure they don't keep feeding them. They're going to have to. Henry Clay is taking the dragon right now. Should be a free dragon. Doesn't clock by the team knows about it, and they do get the dragon. So they're probably going to go right back to lane. Rex might invade, but there is no jungle camps to clear, so he's not going to be able to get anything off of it. He just chooses to pop the plant instead. Oh, he leaves it. He's like hovering around midside in case they decide to go in on Grand. Blake is now 1 1, allow he does have a kill. Killing Prophet may try to engage here, but if they do engage, they should be able to get something off of it as long as they use the Ash Ultimate to its fullest advantage. Henry Clay has a CS, a creep score advantage over everyone on the white team, which is very unfortunate, but they, the Rexile has been all over the map, and it's been very hard to keep getting farm. They do try to gank Blake up in top lane, but they're not able to get a successful gank, and Blake actually ends up coming above with the trade on Lowey. Matt is hovering in top lane, but it doesn't look like he's going to be able to get anything, he's just staying there for the pressure. Looks like Henry Clay's bottom lane is continuing to shove in. Oh, Blake is deciding to go in. The Lowy ultimate does come out. That's a lot of damage on him. Matt is there, and he gets the kill on a Lowy with the with the Urgot ultimate. Very good job on Blake. Unfortunately, the Matt didn't get an assist there. Matt is choosing to invade, but he's he's even with the Rex side, and he definitely can't take him on in a one v one. Looks like Blake's probably going to push out that wave and then recall. Yep, he's going to recall right there. It's the Lowy for five gold. Looks like Henry Clay bot, bot lane is playing very aggressive and is being pushed up constantly on the map. Brand is able to get some get a get a control ward in River. Viking does not have very much vision on the map, and neither does Henry Clay, so it doesn't matter too much, but it would definitely be very helpful if they had more vision and potentially wreck class jungle or in river. Both, a, both teams have a ward in that bush right beside the bottom lane. And Urgot changes his teleport to Ignite, so he's going to have a lot of kill potential on Olawi.
they're keeping that gold lead at a mere two and a half thousand, which, you know, in all things considering, whenever it's put upon five five people, it's only like a five hundred gold lead. So it's not too detrimental for the white team, but it would certainly be helpful if they could pull back with this gold. Silver is now a full fifty farm up on Blake Halsey. We're also less than one minute away from the turret plating falling, so once these turret plating Calls. I will be surprised if they don't try to do a five man or maybe mid or bottom lane and try to get one of these plates or turrets. Now, there's only been one turret plating fall, and that's in mid lane, and that's been Bran where Logan, whenever Logan roamed. And Alawi is going in, but Xin Zhao is there. The ultimate comes out and is doing a lot of damage to Blake. He does get Blake, but it looks like Matt may be able to get him back. Oh, Matt is getting very low, but he's able to survive. He may go back in. And he kills the Alawi. Good job, but he does end up getting traded out by the Alawi tentacles. Now Logan is towards top, but Bran has followed him, so he hasn't been able to ulti. And he does see the Bran, decides to go on him, and gets a lot of damage off onto him. But Bran is going to be able to chunk him back back down to half health and maybe lower. Now bot lane is getting engaged on. Looks like Rexop might be trying to go behind him, or he's just trying to evade. Looks like he's just trying to evade, but there is no camps. Matt is taking a very good job at just clearing out all of his jungle camps for Rexop. It's currently six kills to four. Henry Clay with the advantage. Still maintaining about a 3,000 gold lead, 3,200 gold lead. Looks like Galio has finished his first autumn along with Brand, so that'd be their big power spike. Now, Blake has got the parts for a Black Cleaver, and he's actually got an Executioner Calling, which will do a lot, considering that allowing this insane healing in the team fights. It'll keep her health down, you know, to where she won't be able to heal very much at all, and it'll just keep her, you know, either even with health or actually losing a lot of health. Rexot does t tend to take that blue buff instead of giving it to their mid laner, which is very unfortunate, because Rexot doesn't use any mana whatsoever, or need the ability power or the cooldown reduction, so... That brand is losing it online. Re Matt does decide to go in, but he's getting chunked out from the Rek'Sai, and he's very low. He's going to get taken down, and Rek'Sai does get the kill. Logan does seem to live there, though. Matt does flash out, but he ended up burning it for nothing as he did die. Uh, they don't have much vision at all, so they're not sure where Rek'Sai is, and a lot of these are very risky plays. Henry Clay going after the dragon. Dylan Prophet does spot out the dragon, but he's going to just run away, as he should. He's not going to be able to steal it, and Henry Clay does end up killing the dragon. It's only a mountain drake, though, so it's not going to be too detrimental during team fights. It's just going to be a lot of damage to those turrets. And Blake ends up being engaged on by the Alawi, and he keeps you know, a fairly even trade. And now that the Alawi ultimate's gone, they are going to have a lot of pressure on that top lane. Leona does go in. They're, they're getting the engage on the Braum. They are getting a lot of damage. Ash Ultimate does come out. Braum down to half health. Half health. They are focusing the Braum, though, instead of the Sivir. Looks like Braum's going to get out on that. Blake does get the Alawi kill. So that's very good for him. He ends up using his ultimate. And Rexa is on him, but he's nice not going to kill him. Very nice dodge from Blake. Ended up letting Alawi not be able to, or Rexa not be able to get the ultimate off on him. If he did have it up, it didn't look like he had it up, but I wasn't sure. So. They end up blowing only Sivir's heal. She not she did not flash, and Rom did not exhaust, so that's not very good for the bottom lane. They are going to go back onto the prom, but he does have a shield up, and he's going to take a lot of damage, but they're actually going to get out-traded by the Sivir. They're letting that Sivir get a lot of damage on them. Looks like... Er, er, Galio is coming down to try to maybe get a gank off, but to no avail because they are playing very passive and backing off. They do know that they're on the bush, so if Dylan Prophet goes in, then Galio will be able to ultimate, and that would be a very big team fight. He misses the uh, Leona pool, so he wasn't able to go on him. And Matt chose the path away. So they didn't end up dying there, but neither did Henry, Cl Henry Clay's. So. Brand is able to get a lot of farm in that mid lane where Logan's been gone. Very unfortunate.
Blake Blackburn does change his flash to exhaust, so he's going to be able to do, to block a lot of that Leona damage. He needs to walk out of the range of that, though. He takes almost his full health from that Leon, or from that Alawi. Looks like Alawi's getting a lot of damage up on top turret, and she's going to doff Blake. Galileo does ultimate in, but it wasn't to any avail. And wow, Leono. Galileo's getting a lot of damage on that Lowie, but he doesn't have much more for his combo left. Matt does come in, but he's going to get her. But that's a two for one for yeah. the white team. Very unfortunate. Yeah, the gold lead is starting to get out there pretty bad now. It's almost up to 6,000. That's... Looks like Leona is going in, but there is no jungle or mid lane pressure that they can go off. And they're focusing the Braum still. Doing a lot of damage onto him, but it's only the support. Rek'Sai is there, so they might try to counter engage, and Brandon's behind them. So if they do engage, this will be very detrimental for the bot lane, and they don't have any ultimates. They just use the Leona and Ash ultimate, and it looks like they are setting up for the Dov, and they target the Ash. Ash is dead, and they're going on to the Leona now. Leona also falls, so that's a double kill for Henry Clay. And they're probably going to take that bot tower yeah, as well they here. They do get the bot tower, so that's a lot of gold that's going to Henry Clay on top of their already 7,000 gold lead. Uh, it's almost 1.2 thousand gold on each enemy champion that you know has been funneled into them that the white team does not have. So it's very unfortunate, and you can tell that by looking at the items that the white versus Henry Clay has. They're all almost down like a full item or at least 1 thousand gold each. Urgot yeah, is playing it safe on the top lane now. That, that allow he has brought it back from you know zero to two to five to six. Rexa is five zero apparently. Looks like they lost both the turrets in their mid lane and bottom lane, so it's very unfortunate for the white team. Matt is roaming to the jungle, but he does not know that Brand is there, and he gets caught out, and he ends up getting killed. It was a two man on Matt. Very unfortunate. Did not have any vision, which is not what you would expect to see. Not only does that hurt their kill count, but it also hurts you know their gold. That gives them even more gold. Matt did have a 3 2 kill record in KDA. So he didn't, it wasn't like he wasn't worth very much gold. He was actually worth quite a bit of gold for that Henry Clay team. And they're approaching a 10,000 gold lead. And Ergot is actually teleporting into the bot lane. He gets hit by the Brand W. But it doesn't seem like there's going to be much done here. They seem to be backing away. But Galileo can roam down for the ultimate. He does have it up now if they choose to fight. They are on the dragon. Looks like they do get the dragon, and they're converging on the mid lane. They, light teams have been falling. They seem to know that they're going, and they might catch him out. Or they may get caught out. Looks like they're just trying to play it passive. They're engaging on the white team. Galileo does ultimate. Very good ultimate. Gets a two-man knockup. They get one kill. Get one kill on the Lowy. And it's going ham. But Brand is killing everybody with that AoE damage. Looks like they're going to be pathing towards Baron now instead of taking in the towers. Actually, they're going to be taking the uh, mid lane tower. So they're taking the mid lane tower now. And they have a... 20 plus second re respawn time on everybody, but they're not going to be able to end off of that. They do not have the damage to get the inhibitor quick enough, and they don't have a mid like a, a minion wave right now. So I don't think they'll be able to end off of this. They may choose to go Baron after they get this tower, but I'll be surprised if they do anything besides getting this tower and potentially an inhibitor. The whole team is coming up right now, so it's very risky for them to say they have more items now. Looks like they're backing off. They Seem to be pathing towards Baron, but it's very risky as White Team is certainly still alive and well. Now, if White Team does predict that they're going towards Baron, they could walk up there and where they're full HP. You know, they can fight and they have the item advantage now from Henry Clay not recalling. But they don't seem to be realizing that White Team, or that they are doing Baron, seem to have a general idea as they start walking towards Baron, but it is too late. Henry Clay does capture Baron, and the Ash comes out. Now, 
No. They are pushing that mid lane and they're gonna they bring those Baron buff minions down mid. Seems like they're going to be able to get a substantial push off of it as well and allow a split push and pop lane so they may get two towers at least off of this. Off of this split push. Or they may choose to all converge on the mid lane, but Sivir is all is bottom lane, they're not doing anything with this Baron buff. They're all separated, but Matt does seem to be getting caught out. Those super minions are really causing a headache too for the wolf swat. Oh yeah, for sure. You're not able to go anywhere while clearing out those super minions. It's very tough to pull back when you have super minions near your base. They seem to be in white team's top lane jungle, and the white team is actually on a ward right now, so they do know that here they could potentially catch them out. They're clearing ward grip right beside raptors, and there goes all of white team's vision. Get a little bit of poke off on him, but Brahm's Guardian protects all of it. So, uh, Henry Clay just took out that bot tower. Now, they did get poked out of that bush, and they seem to be walking away. Now, it seems like Henry Clay is splitting from top and middle lane. They have three on that top lane. They're just choosing to get that instead of push middle. They do have now two out of the three top lane towers, and they're now working on the inhibitor tower. Looks like they're also going to be able to take it before they do go in. They may look for a fight as soon as it's over. Ash does ultimate in, but there's no one there to back him up. Galio is mid lane right now. They're not able to get a engage off. Matt does get poked down to half. And they're going to get this inhibitor and potentially push to win right now. Sivir is still pushing bottom lane, so they're going to go for that bottom lane inhibitor probably on top of what they already do have. And Henry Clay cleaning up that last inhibitor on the bot lane. Henry Clay now has three waves of minions pushed into the lot team's base. And they're killing the Nexus Towers. And they yeah. get the Ash. And it looks like this might be game for Henry Clay and white team. They do end up killing the whole team besides Urgot. And they are going to take the Nexus while Urgot stays in Nexus or stays in Fountain. Be careful and... Henry Clay does end up taking out the game. Very good game played from Henry Clay there, and unfortunate to see our white team lose. Yes, both teams put up a valiant effort and, and left it all out there. So uh, the Henry Clay gold team coming away victorious uh, against our Wolves white. So. We will uh, sign off, and uh, we'll be back in just a few minutes for the second matchup between the Wolves White and the Henry Clay Gold Team.